Welcome to this week's installment of Reading with Robin, your number one destination since 2002 for insightful author interviews and discussions on everything literary. And with no further introduction, your host, Robin Call. Having the most fun talking to my guests off air, so I'm going to bring her on air. This book is called Dr. Dogs. It's how our best friends are becoming our best medicine. And Maria Godavage, former USA Today journalist, Maria Godavage is considered one of the foremost author experts on working dogs and her critically acclaimed New York Times bestselling books, Soldier Dogs, Top Dog, and Secret Service Dog. She's appeared on numerous national TV shows, including The Daily Show and Today, and given talks about working dogs in the New York Stock Exchange, National Museum, the United States Air Force, and other notable venues, plus here on Reading with Robin. She lives in San Francisco with her yellow lab, Gus. We're just talking about Gus. Gus knows this. And I'm thrilled to share her here on Reading with Robin. Welcome to the show, Maria. Hey. Thank you so much, Robin. Oh, you're welcome. I saw this book, I think, when I was at Book Expo with, uh, with Megan. And, I, and uh-huh. of course, she had me at Dogs, and I see this picture. Now, is this Gus on the cover? No, Gus is a yellow oh. lab. So the cover dog is, um, well, let's just say it's, golden? Dog, is it a golden? it's a golden. And yeah. we don't even know if it's a boy or a girl. It was a stock <laughs> image that they doctored, uh, oh. shall we say. It's really cute, though. It's, I love the cover. It's just it's very it's, sweet wearing a stethoscope. Way. And it's, it's just out. And I am thinking of so many people. This is going to be the best holiday gift ever ever, all of the dog lovers and the medical people in my life. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, you, there's just connecting, like you and I were talking off air, and when, when you're talking to somebody who is a dog person, there's just, a, you could just go on and on. You could have absolutely nothing else to talk about or being, you know, or seemingly in common when you meet somebody, but if there's that dog element in connection, that connection is just paramount. Do you find yeah, that? Absolutely. Yeah, dogs. As I, as I said, dogs are social lubricants. Actually, my yes. my husband and I met through our dogs. Uh, you in did the early '90s. So yeah, we were. He was um, do he was working um, at a TV station. So week he had an outdoor segment, and um, he interviewed me on a book I had written about great places to take a dog in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh and, wow! And so our dogs got along, and at the end of three hours of taping, he said, "Well, if you ever want to go on a dog walk sometime." So, yeah, that dogs. That is awesome. So that was, wow. Oh, I yeah. love that. And we, my husband and I met the exact opposite way. Oh, <laughs> Talking no. About, well, no, neither of us knew anything about dogs, you know. Right. I at least grew up with a rabbit. But we are all dog people now. So right. you're either born into it or you can come into it. But there's just nobody like a popper. I mean, there's just, and, and reading these stories, and visit Maria's website, mariagodavage.com, and from there you can find her on Twitter and on Instagram, and there's Facebook, and just everywhere, and the events are up there. And so talk about this book. This is remarkable to me about Dr. Dogs and, and what they can do and all of the, the uh, I got the, orig- the early copy, but then when I received the finished copy, there were all these beautiful photographs of dogs and the research that you've done and the different illnesses that they can sniff out and, and situations. It's, it's so remarkable. I, I don't, I mean, I need to speak to you for more than the three hours your husband got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that. loved putting this book together. I actually got to travel around the world to do the oh. research because I wanted to get to the best places where they were doing this. Now, I, I should explain what what Dr. Dogs is. It's yeah. it's not really about how uh, the traditional ways that we think that dogs can make us healthier, where they do. They get us outside. They help us exercise and socialize. And um, you know, studies have shown they help our blood pressure and, mm-hmm. and heart health and all that good stuff. This is more... Um, um, the cutting edge ways that dogs are helping us stay healthy, um, and, and, and really, it's a it's a really scientific book, but it's really easy reading. It's fun oh, reading, it's such and a joy to read. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's a lot of stories yeah, mixed in with are. the science, mm-hmm. and um, they're detecting around the world an astonishing variety of diseases and disorders, both in as service dogs in people's homes and in scientific research and. 
when we're talking about scientific research, I should just get this out of the way. Um, these are not beagles locked in cages. These are happy right. dogs who are usually um, our pets, people mm-hmm. bring in, or, um, or they may be foster dogs in a program. And they come in for a day or a part of a day, and they sniff out various diseases and get great rewards for it and lots of loving praise and go mm-hmm. home at the end of the day, usually. And um, they, are, they are the happy dogs doing this kind of research work in um, places like universities or uh, specifically like in England, there's a place called Medical Detection Dogs, which is doing all kinds of research with these dogs who just love being there. It's like, I was there for a couple of days. It's just like a big dog party there. I and then can, they go in I and they do their work. Yeah, That's, it's, it's just, just it, it, it's incredible also, like that you, and you have to say also in this book, the, the research and all of this uh, data backing up what you talk about and, and the stories because they are narratives about people with their dogs and, and the, all of these different stories. So it's just, um, it's such a wonderful read and I love books like this where you could be reading a little bit, sort of takes you off on another journey, you want to learn more. I was looking up, I was like finding myself like places to visit, you know, all sorts of like it's a travel book it's all of it. and, <laughs> yeah but um, japan i would definitely wow. um, go back there in a heart in fact i did go back there in a heart um, summer to do a little more research and um and just to be there for a month because i loved it so much so awesome. um, there's yeah. a great part of the book in in japan a really fascinating study that they were doing with cancer detection dogs as you mm-hmm. probably know um, yeah. the book talks a lot about um they have, we have a whole chapter on dogs who detect cancer and it's, this is yes they have done this anecdotally probably some of your listeners um have had their dog poke out a spot on their body on you know, sort of relentlessly and then yeah. the person finds got checked and there was something going on there but um, and we do mention that certainly in the book but really I'm talking more about the the very scientific ways people are um, working with dogs to find cancer in these laboratory settings and they're detecting many different kinds of cancers at quite early stages and I have a particular skin in the game with ovarian cancer because it seems to run in our family and um, and dogs at the University of Pennsylvania are sniffing that out at quite early stages in blood, in plasma, um, and very tiny, tiny amounts of plasma, actually sometimes even mixed a drop of plasma, a drop of saline, and they take one drop from that half and half mixture, and the dog can smell that in in this sort of carousel of many choices that they have to sniff out. So um, Mm -hmm. this... Dogs are not going to be in the back room of your doctor's office telling you, though, oh, yes, this person might have something going on. What right. they're doing is um, they'll be leading to technology. So mm-hmm. what the hope is inexpensive, rapid, accurate, non-invasive testing for some of these cancers that are really hard to detect early. And that could be something as easy as blowing into a tube because the scientists are, lear- are trying to find out what volatile organic compounds are coming from us and what the dogs are smelling that's different about people with cancer in the urine or the blood or uh, not the actual tissue itself but various samples from us and so if the scientists can work with the dogs to find out oh is it this and they'll give the dog these compounds and the dogs will recognize it or not and the hope is that they'll be able to calibrate some kind of uh, device that can can accurately detect these things so I think that's just so so great and so exciting and the potential for that and yeah. to cut out on some of the the I mean so much that's so invasive and we know early detection is the best possible you know thing to, to best possible you know to have that information and uh, you know I, I just I can't I, the, the um, outcomes are it's just startling to think of what we could be receiving medically in that yes, way yes absolutely and, and how did um, they I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, just because it's, and it really is by virtue of the dog's nose. They are so sensitive, as anyone who has a dog knows. You take your dog on a walk. And <laughs> They're relentless. Really- Stopping and and uh, you know, I, since I started doing these books, my original books were about you know as, as you mentioned, Secret Service dogs, military dogs, mm-hmm. and they are always thwarting the bad guys. But these dogs, these doctor dogs, are you know kind of 
taking on disease and illness. And um, part of it is definitely their nose. That's that's the main uh, that's the sort of the main theme in the book. Is this is most of the work they're doing is through their incredible noses. So they they can sniff in parts per trillion in 3D. They're they have they have about well, we have about six million olfactory receptors, which is lovely, mm-hmm. and we smell well. But dogs have up to 300 million. Their <laughs> brains are well equipped to to make sense of these odors and it's unimaginable so, those numbers. Yeah. And then but, how does yeah. that first get figured out? Like that they have this ability to smell in some, there was a lot of math there, and then also what that means and what they're looking for and like how they break that down. Yeah, it was really complicated, and actually those figures vary widely. I, I mentioned that in, that in the book, but um, there are the, 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 the parts per trillion, picture one tablespoon of a substance in two Olympic-sized swimming pools. So yeah, that's sort of the ratio. Um, wow. And they're, they can, they, they're all factory world. If, if you're taking your dog on a walk and they're stopping <laughs> and sniffing something and you can't see it, it's not anything to you right. or me, but their all factory world is so rich and vivid. It's kind of like our visual world. So if we stop and look at a beautiful sunset or some strange sight, it's kind of like what they're doing when they're smelling. And this researcher at University of Pennsylvania likes to say that dogs smell in color. I love that. Mm, I think it's I like, so yes. descriptive. And I, I know I've seen them sniff out narcotics and explosive Makes materials sense. and plastic yeah. bags in a can and, and, and a suitcase around it. It's not a problem to, to find these things that we just wouldn't imagine they could smell. Well, I, I certainly believe that's true. I mean, anytime Benny thinks, and I talk about Benny all the time on Reading with Robin, <laughs> that if he thinks there's something under the couch or whatever, it's like, just pick the thing up. It's there. We just yeah. like, let's just go. Let's go to the part where we believe that he's right because he's, they're never wrong. They're and they wrong. are Right. And they are relentless and they know yes. where they leave things and what they smell like and, and all of that. It's It's just, it's so fascinating. And I'm speaking with... With Maria Godavage, Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best Medicine. And there are are stories after stories in this book about, you talk about the one and and the skin in the game with with your family history. So when you met this dog, certainly, I mean, how could you, you know, were you nervous or? Yeah, so I'll explain that. I mean, I would, I I got to think, I would have been like, you know, freaking out. Yeah, so so just so readers kind of know what we're, listeners know what we're talking about, um, I, um, I was, I had bad insurance, health insurance at the time, and we uh, do have this family history. I had some little twinges, and I was thinking, oh, I should really get checked out, but the tests were going to cost me 2000 to $3,000, more likely 3000 and most likely be fine. There is no gold standard for ovarian. Right. So, uh, yeah. um, no tests. so I thought, you know, I'm probably fine, but I knew I was going to be this dog who was trained to detect ovarian cancer, among other things. And uh, very unscientifically, this dog sometimes moonlights and outside of the work in the environment uh, of the research center, sometimes goes up to people who have cancer and paws at them. That's her thing. And then what does his mama do? Like, what do you... Well, that's the thing. It is, it is, um, she's, a, she has a dilemma. Does she, yeah. does she mention what her dog does? Does she start, you know, just talking about it and they'll say, oh, yes, I have this, or maybe they'll think about it later. But, yeah. um, she's very, she's very by the book. So this is something the dog is doing on her own. Mm-hmm. And so I just thought, well, you know, I'm going to meet this dog. I, I was just going to see what she does. And, um, um, I wasn't going to say anything, and I was just uh, praying when I met her that she wasn't going to sit down and start pawing at me. Right. And she didn't. She flopped over and let me rub her belly and then just didn't pay any attention. I brought my dog, too, so she was playing with him. Perfect. So right. at the time, I just thought, okay, I bought myself another year probably. <laughs> and I subsequently had the test. I'm fine. But um, very unscientific, but it shows the desperate measures people might go through sometimes. And how no early question. testing, even for something like breast cancer, is needed because we, um, we have them, but it can be so much better, and if dogs can lead us to that, what better way? To, like that just adds another layer to them being our best friends, doesn't it? Best ever. That there is, um, I find so much hope. I mean, there are so many things we hear about, and you think, okay, when's that coming along? And that sounds great, but like reading Doctor Dogs and and really thinking about the implications, and also for you know dogs who are able to detect seizures and monitor somebody's. Uh, Blood sugar level, all of these things, it's, it's uh, you know, just the quality of life is exponentially increased. And to 
you know, to be with your best friend there. I, I just, um, you know, and, and I don't know. I, I know I shouldn't judge, <clears throat> but people who aren't, like, really attached to dogs just, like, really freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> problem well, like i don't understand we have some cat people listening so i love I, cat people i i should sure. say or animal attachment oh like okay, okay. no animal <laughs> we'll go there i mean yes no i i used to i did this um before the podcast i was on the radio for many years and i would have the cat people sending messages and i like them too they're very nice i mean nobody's a dog <laughs> but but i just like i don't understand you know like we'll be out with benny and most people will come over that you know like i was telling you off air that all sorts of things happen but like someone that just like walks by i'm like they didn't even look down i don't get it i do not <laughs> look I, like, well people with kids one. little kids feel that way too sometimes so it's yes all, it's all kind of comes around but um yeah i i agree <laughs> and, and everyone should love my dog gus but not it's everyone exactly. does and I, I, it's okay um but it's <laughs> it's funny because we do have a few cats in the book so we don't yes. ignore them completely no, they i like cats out to have They're senses nice. of smell and that are really quite good it's just cats are cats and we're probably not going to be using them. We're, um, my next book is not going to be called Clinician Cats. I can pretty much guarantee that. But, yeah, someone you were mentioning – yeah, dogs can be pulled right through at that one. Someone yeah. else can do that. Um, but, sure. but dogs do the, – the service dogs are – who do these things. You know, my book is not about the traditional dog but jobs of um, helping people with visual or hearing impairments. It's, mm-hmm. um, these are uh, so the, finding out how they're doing these, these jobs with detecting seizures or diabetic lows or highs. And it's, um, they've been training, uh, you, probably a lot of listeners know, diabetic dogs, diabetic alert dogs have been around for almost about 15 or 20 years now, much more common now, and there's a very high demand for them. Mm-hmm. The ones who are really well trained are, are gems. They change people's lives. They can detect these diabetic lows or highs sometimes up to you know, about 20 minutes ahead of time seems to be ahead of actually when their devices, their monitoring devices yeah, do. That's so just incredible. They have that. And then for seizures, for people with seizures, it used to be thought and still is in some circles that you cannot train a dog to alert to a seizure. The dog has to, um, has to figure that out themselves. So How they, um, fig- how how they, they would get so that the message. Dog, the dogs did that. Somehow dogs mm-hmm. do that. But um, more recently, people are training dogs on the scent of someone in a seizure so that um, the person, when the person uh, meets the dog for the first time, um, that dog often will alert to the person as soon as their, their first seizure is uh, impending. They will alert because they know that scent, and they associate that scent with all good things, so uh-huh. um, with rewards and happiness and love. So uh, I write about that in the book, and people People are giving back their lives. People who didn't used to be able to take a shower. Ahead, yeah, I, alone. it's just invaluable. I yeah. yeah. And then the and then to have these dogs and like where they're trained and like to be able to, um, you know, have one in your life. That has to be a whole other process. And how you know people are connected with the right dog or are some well, you know some some dogs that people are already living with are they able to be trained? You know, like yeah, are there certain yeah. breeds that do better work? You right. know, we're it able depends. to do this like, work better. I've seen in research settings, I've seen so many breeds of dogs mm-hmm. from the tiniest little Yorkies to mm-hmm. great big, I don't even, big, big old mixes of dogs, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Labrador retrievers, of course. Um, but yeah. there's, there are a lot of different dogs, and, and actually the same with service dogs for this. Um, they need to be kind of on point focused and reward driven mm-hmm. because that's what they're, initially that's what they're working for. And I have, um, I, there are people who have converted their own dogs to work with their medical condition or their mental health condition with really good training through trainers, and um, but most people probably end up getting a service dog through an organization, and that's one thing I just caution people about. There are lots of organizations out there, um, and a lot of them, some of them are really, really, really good. Some of them mean well. Maybe yeah. they're not training out the best dogs, and there are some people out there who just want to make a buck. So yeah. um, really, I, I yeah, so you really, caution. yeah, so you really have to know you what you're know. doing, and, and what are some websites or places that you would suggest people look so that they're going to the right 
places and they're not yeah, there's, getting taken. I mean, some people say um, to uh, that dogs train through um, one particular. Actually, they can go to my website and find this information because it's kind of complicated to under, uh, to um, that that, yeah. discuss right now. But there are there are, uh, there's a national organization that um, is certifying service dogs. Um, that, that but and they're really good. That's not the only kind of service dog that's good, though. I've written a lot about the dogs in the book who are trained by their own people with the help of other people, and they're amazing what these yeah. dogs can do. You don't even have to have a diagnosis in some cases um, to train a dog to be able to alert to your condition. There was a young man in Southern California who had this really mysterious thing where he was paralyzed out of the blue. He would just uh, he would just fall and be paralyzed or, or at the opposite, have dystonia, which would make muscle cramps all over his body, incredibly painful, tight muscle cramps. And, and there was a headache sometimes associated with this, so doctor said, oh, it's probably a migraine. So mm-hmm. the parents got a, um, a dog and worked with a trainer to train the dog on the scent of the boy when he was a, about to have one of these. So he would... He would basically spit into a piece of gauze and put it Mm -hmm. in in something in the refrigerator uh, every half hour. And then when um, he would have a paralysis episode, they would save the one that was the closest and Uh. train their dog on that. And it turned out in the long run, this was not migraines. This was something completely different. It Mm -hmm. was a result of um, a complication from Ehlers-Danlos syndrome where his brainstem was basically being crushed. So he's had Mm -hmm. numerous operations since and he's much better. The dog still alerts. But the dog was amazing. She just she Mm -hmm. saved him so many times Uh and with Ellers Danlos, his his joints all pop out when he falls. So it was it was a terrible situation, and he's his life has improved vastly. And he trained his own dog with his parents. That is just amazing. And I think that just hearing these stories, I mean, the the connection between people, you know, and their do- and their dogs. Yeah, that that uh, that's why I can't stand like well, I'm a dog owner. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> like, yeah. All of those kinds of things. I'm so sensitive, and I'm this is uh, I. You're listening to Reading with Robin, and Marie and I are talking about her brand new book, Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best Medicine. Yet yeah, all of those sorts of things, I, I mean, those, that could be a whole addendum show about how that, what that connection is. Talk, talk about, of course, because of the queen, I need to hear about Nimbus and the, um, and the queen's purse. Uh, talk, about, talk about that yeah, one. So I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, when I was in England, I met with this dog named Nimbus. He's this gorgeous yellow creature who um, who was trained through medical detection dogs, which I mentioned earlier in the program. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was there to help his young lady um, with these these episodes where she loses consciousness out of the blue and hasn't really been diagnosed, um, but it's 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 very it really alters life it affects her life as you can imagine so because medical detection dogs is um is a friend of the of royalty uh at one point the queen queen elizabeth the second came uh well had them come to the royal muse which are the stables at buckingham palace mm-hmm. and he had she had many people from medical detection dogs there um with um with camilla and they they had demonstrations for the her her majesty and they did all kinds of things and nimbus was there with jody his person and mm-hmm. partway through this um nimbus started alerting to jody and she thought oh no no Th- thankfully she was sitting but so no i'm not going to lose consciousness now so she <laughs> she could they are all sitting in a circle in chairs so she had to sneak away very quietly and she went and lay down and um, nimbus snuggled up right beside her and she she kind of went out of it just for a little bit and she came back and she's very shaky when she comes back into consciousness mm-hmm. but she walked back and she it was done the everything was done and people were meeting and greeting and she got to meet the queen and as the queen is asking her questions with great curiosity and 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 just very very good questions um (laughs) nimbus was he he took the opportunity to go into the queen's purse (laughs) with his nose and snortle around there (laughs) and the queen didn't say anything i don't know if she noticed but um when i was in england interviewing them nimbus 
kissed me um, on the mouth, actually. And, I, and later when I found out that he <laughs> did this with the Queen's first, I felt like I was connected to the Queen somehow because this dog kissed me and he went in the Queen's purse and somehow we're related now. But well, um, Of course you that. are. And, she, oh. and so, and and he's helped her so much with with wow. hers, and just stories like that, you know, all over the world, what these dogs are doing, and and they do it at first. Yes, it's for the reward and treat, and probably always is in some cases, but it's also they they get to know what they're doing, and they know they can tell that they're helping. This is love. This is helping Such their human love. feel. And great. that's the thing. Like they can, they have that sense of smell, and I love the the illustration of of the you know the bit and and the two pools of you know and two swimming pools full of I mean so that really illustrates it but they do they just there's that love and that is such a powerful thing and it radiates from them back and forth to their their beloveds and back and forth and and it's just pure joy and uh they're food motivated or toy motivated and there is that but I think it's just their essence and it's an amazing thing and and reading about all of the ways that they're helping their people um it's it's just such a powerful read and it's a gorgeous book and I'm can't wait to share it with the Reading with Robin audience. And we do have copies to give away, so people can go to Reading with Robin on Facebook. I sometimes forget that part. I'm like, are we even giving away gifts? But this is the top of my holiday shopping list for all the dog people in my life, of which there are many. (laughs) So I'm very excited, and people can go to your website to see where you'll be um, touring around. And are you going, are any of the dogs in this book part of the tour or are they included? Um, yeah, in my tour is really limited. And that's You're on the West we're, Coast, right? We're focusing more, yeah, mostly, yeah, we're on the West Coast, focusing mostly on TV and radio. But, um, but yeah, there is one dog in who's coming to um, a book event I'm having in north, just north of San Francisco, and mm-hmm. this is um, Clay Ronk's dog. He was, he's a young man with yes. diabetes, and their story is so dramatic and so beautiful. And so he and his dog will be there, Aww. and they will be my focus because that's what people really want to see. Oh, yeah. It'll be like, wait, where's Maria? Oh, where's yeah, Maria? Okay. I know. That's fine. That's totally it, fine it, with me. <laughs> it, you know, that is the, the seeing that and really experiencing it. It's just, um, it's something that is uh, to, to witness that and, and soak up that energy is, is really something. And if your travels take you this way or you're researching or something, we would love to meet you, and we know that Benny Irving would be thrilled. Oh, I would love to, to meet both of you. To Absolutely. be in your, to be in your love the photo. Orbit. I love the photo of him with the book, and that will be appearing on my socials as well. Thank you. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. I have to say, you know, Emily is the photographer. I just did my best. I think I put a piece of something at the top, <laughs> and, then I, and then he looked at it. Yeah, I've learned a trick oh, or two. Oh, he wasn't really reading my book oh, oh, well. oh he oh he totally was but okay. first he wanted the treat then he wants to read it <laughs> but let's see what emily can do because she will put me to shame for sure although she may look at it and go oh, you didn't do half bad so oh, really um cute. yes paying attention but i uh to her her work i know you have to go so i i will not take up more time because i could talk about this forever it is it is really something special and i know that people will be talking about it and looking for t- forward to more research and seeing where all of this takes us, you know, into practical terms, like you said, with um, affordable um, apparatus and, think, you know, just yeah. all, all, all making things better and, and adding hope to, to so many situations. And, um, and I hope to get to meet Gus as well. Yeah, thank you so much. If you're out on the West Coast, he would love to meet you. I love, hey, we do have a plan to take Benny on a cross-country trip. That is oh, well, our, make, make us your San Francisco destination. I would Have love me. that. This will <laughs> Please, be even seriously. more. I would no. This will be more of an impetus for us to do it. That this is our this is in our 2020 plan. So oh great, we um, have great photo ops with the Golden Gate Bridge. We have wonderful <sighs> off-leash beaches and parks Aww. here. So he will really like it. He may want to stay here, and that's okay. We'll I'm sure he, wherever he goes, he's happy and wants to stay. It's like wait, yeah. remember us? Oh yeah, I love you guys too. I'm <laughs> happy here. That's the thing. They're just they're so filled with joy, and it's Doctor Dogs. How our best friends are becoming our best medicine, and all the best with this beautiful book, and it was a pleasure to speak with you, Maria. Thank you. You too, Robin. Thanks for tuning in to this week's installment of the Reading with Robin podcast. As always, our full-length podcasts will be available right here on robincall.com. We appreciate your support 
and look forward to having you over next week when we chat with our next featured guest. Have a great week, and happy reading.